my first stab at a 3D printed Wi-Fi antenna. Keep it simple, keep it very real. Now, keeping it real is for me a relevant topic, but you may think this is actually quite um, nerdy. So what I've been doing uh, is really, well, I love 3D printing, I love printing in general, and I love designing. So I'm going to change my tune on the YouTube channel and, and actually do some of our own design work for this channel as well, not just talk about other people's products anymore, because um, that's every now and again quite relevant, but these days it's also quite important that we tell the um, community that we do designs and not just tell people we do the designs, but show them this is what can be done and also um, working on projects that we will eventually have available for the community to buy. So the first design may not be finished yet. I'm working through it, but I thought to myself, rather get in, show something and get going other than wait and wait and wait and not get anything done. So the first design is this little dish. So the dish is something I've designed using CST. CST is a design tool that we use. Um, we're fortunate to have a license that we can use there. Um, and the dish itself then gets fed by a classic spiral antenna. Now, spiral antenna is a type of antenna that's just very broad band. Um, and we put it in the actual feed location of the antenna. Now there's a bit of optimization needed, that's why you do need a software package, not necessarily as complex as CST, but you do need a form of um, optimization so that you can get the positioning of the antenna correct and you also need to have the antenna itself correct. Um, now, so that's the first step, is just getting the design done in CST. The second step was going for the 3D print. So, as you can see on the screen, I had my, um, I bought myself an awesome European branded Prusa printer. Um, got it built, well, not got it built. <laughs> I spent myself, I spent a whole week in building this thing um, and got it working. I'm pretty happy with this. I really look forward to just doing more and more 3D prints on that machine. And there you could see I spent last weekend printing my first design um, in various blocks. Um, Following that, the next step was now I have my 3D bits and pieces and I start to put them all together. But one of the questions that I have to study in this study for this specific antenna is how to, what we call, metalize the antenna. Now, metalize means that I'll actually have a reflector, but when you print it using just classic um, plastic, PLA in this case, it's plastic, so it's not going to reflect anything. Um, so I'm doing a study and I will share that once I learn about what you can spray on the actual plastic to make it metal. Um, there are very expensive options, there are very cheap options. I want to see which one works best, but for this one, I just used normal aluminium tape and it's actually the kind of tape that I bought at the local hardware store that you could use for any installation because I'll just go for reflection for in and out so that would work well. One thing that I had to do here was you make strips and this is kind of just coming back to basics that if you have just one big piece of aluminium that you put on it's going to get all wrinkly and funny so I've, I cut it into little strips so that I can basically have the nice glided um, solution on the dish itself. So there we go, you can see on the screen now I'm putting all my pieces together and I also have the building blocks for my feed section of the antenna. There's the, field, the, the pieces itself and then put it all together. Um, and then it is a case of just building the puzzle. Now the puzzle of course has a bit of um, complexity to it, but um, I'm, I'm going to work through ways to make it easier. Um, one idea that I have, because it's such a lightweight and potentially an indoor type of antenna, is to um, use a GoPro um, feed. So the adapter that I have is designed for a GoPro setup. So there we go, this is a high gain antenna that covers all the frequency bands that is um, currently of interest in Wi-Fi. Um, I'm using an Alpha card, so it's a dual band Wi-Fi card, it's not yet the um, uh, Wi-Fi 6E, I will do that when I go to the beach, so of course in the summertime I'm going to make a few plans and yeah, plan to go to the beach at some point and actually do proper tests, but for today I just want to illustrate this working and get all my tools up and running and show you what I do, so I downloaded inside of N I S S I D E R. Um, that tool basically gives me the opportunity to see what the signal strength is of the Wi-Fi network and then if I change the antennas and stuff, which I can do on the Wi-Fi, on the Alpha card here, um, I could see the difference. And then I could see, is it working, is it not working? It's, it's, it's very crude, but it, it serves the purpose. 
So I'm just going to start recording my screen um, and, and show you this because this is quite a change in, in um, approach from what I've done in the 4G, 5G world where I kind of got really used to the Teltonical systems, but this is, this is just at home um, just to get, get going. So this first video is very rough. I don't expect um, <laughs> huge successes, but I just need to get this going. So I'm just going to just start recording my screen. Okay, so I am recording my screen. Good. All right, so now the setup here that I'm going to test here is, this is my laptop, this is the screen I'm recording. Um, well, alpha card connected to a typical 2 DBI dipole antenna, so all just pretty standard. See what I get. So my home network is Cascop Aussie and Cascop Aussie 5G. So um, that's um, those in South Africa would know what that means. The other people would just say, well, okay, that's just the word. Fair enough. So Cascop Aussie 5G is the, the 5 gig network and Cascop Aussie is the 2.4 gig network. So if I were to just click both, see the signal strength is not bad. So pretty strong, minus 49, minus 52. That is a problem because it's very strong and I'm just on a dark pole. So trying to make that better is potentially going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, we'll see what I can do. Sorry, if I unscrew the um, actual antenna. So now this adapter has no antenna. It should drop to, well, I've, it is dropping. I've already lost my 2.4. I can't see it at all. Fair enough. Now, I take this antenna and I connect it. Okay, network is back. The thing is, no. the signal is too strong for me to really get anything useful. So if I were to visualize it, No, it actually does work. I should have kept my mouth shut. So, if I point this in towards where I know my Wi-Fi router is, this is now on the 5 gig network. It should jump up. There you go, it goes up. It peaks at, well, I'm not sure if it can go higher than that. Signal says minus 42. You can see the graph, it goes up. It's um, fairly strong. If I turn it around, just turn it away, basically. It definitely drops at least 10 dB, if not more. If I swap it, let's put my dipole back. So the dot pole is in. Okay. So actually it's working quite well. It's my wife smiling at me. So with the dot pole, it's about minus 50. And I move the dot pole. Put my directional antenna back on again. And I turn it back. Come on, don't do this to me. Turn it back. What this shows is the direction antenna is working in the 5 gig band. It's a single antenna, single antenna. So that's the first idea. Now, this just gives me enough motivation to think, well, there's more to learn here, there's more to do. All right, so that's the first video. I'm not sure if this is exactly how I wanted it to be, but I'm going to put it up, have a look for how it goes on YouTube, and then we'll do the next one. So the next plan for this antenna is first of all, to just get the, um, the design finished properly. Um, and then 
head will be available for sale as well um, on our website. Uh, also, have a look on 3dprintedantennas.com. You may see that that actually leads you to blackartechnologies.com, which is us. Um, then after that, the next plan will be to actually do the study on, on how I can metallize this and the next step after that would be to convert the design to a 2x2 two two MIMO. Still for the full frequency band. I'm doing this for Wi-Fi because it's quite demonstrable. I'm doing this to learn about 3D printing and to show 3D printing can really make awesome antennas. But I'm also, as I mentioned earlier, definitely doing this to show everybody antennas can be designed in, well, in Australia. Um, and antennas can be designed for specific applications um, and if you have any needs or any questions or you want to learn more about antenna design come to black art technologies or yeah give us a call let us know what we can do for you cheers bye bye